Hey y'all, this is Jeremiah, pastor at Centennial ARP. Thanks for tuning in for today's video devotional. We continue our video series on Proverbs. We're in chapter 6. We'll start with verse 20 today. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life to preserve you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Do not desire her beauty in your heart and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. For the price of a prostitute is only a loaf of bread, but a married woman hunts down a precious life. Can you carry fire next to his che- can a man carry fire next to his chest and his clothes not be burned or can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched so is he who goes into his neighbor's wife none who touches her will go unpunished people do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his appetite when he is hungry but if he's caught he will pay sevenfold he will give all the goods of his house He who commits adultery lacks sense. He who does it destroys himself. He will get wounds and dishonor, and his disgrace will not be wiped away. For jealousy makes a man furious, and he will not spare when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation. He will refuse, though you multiply gifts. Uh, This word in Proverbs chapter 6, it kind of ends the chapter. It's a heavy one. Uh, It's an intense one, and it it can be at times almost uh, shocking to see some of the language that is used as, as we have a comparison. And the comparison is uh, having spiritual sense, that is, following after the wisdom of believing parents who are revealing the way and the path of the Lord. Remember that uh, all throughout Proverbs, we've seen that way, right? Which is fear of the Lord being the beginning. And that's granting knowledge and wisdom and way of life, this fear of the Lord. And, and remember, as we've talked, that, that this fear is, is God-given. It is given to us as believers in the Lord Jesus, as, as we are believing in this saving God, in this revealing God of the Bible. And, and as we are fearing, worshiping, seeing this God for who he is, he is illuminating us as, as even we see see in our uh, section of Proverbs today, uh, the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light, uh, right? We, we are illumined uh, and we see how to move forward because of that. And so we have this on, one, on the one hand, this way of righteousness. And on the other hand, this senseless movement, uh, this path of unrighteousness where we fall into the toils and the tribulation of sin and of uh, sickness and suffering and, uh, uh, and unrighteous pleasure and momentary uh, pleasure and satisfaction. But uh, you see some of the words that are used, and I hope that you caught it uh, as we were reading God's word, that, that this path of unrighteousness, it's, it's senseless. We, uh, uh, in a way, are exchanging a whole life of joy and contentment for uh, something that costs uh, about a loaf of bread, uh, the, a momentary uh, a momentary. A piece of time uh, and uh, uh, interaction uh, for your entire life. And you say, well, uh, that, that's that moment, right? Where uh, I just, I stop thinking, I can't control myself, and that's sin. Uh, for here, we see it in unfaithfulness, for instance, in a marriage or in purity, uh, but uh, it happens elsewhere, right? And I think that's where I would ask you to hone in today, dear Christians. Uh, There is uh, two ways, Uh, the way of life, the way of death, uh, the path of righteousness, the path of unrighteousness, that of faithfulness, uh, that of unfaithfulness. But, uh, you know, as we look at these two paths, uh, there is this fork in the road moment that happens more often than not in our lives, almost every day, where we come to a moment where we say, well, I take the path of righteousness, which uh, my sinful heart is saying, don't. I I would rather go down this path 
this path of unrighteousness because I, I feel like there's going to be pleasure there for me. But, but that is senseless. And, and so today as you're considering these things and as you're reading this shocking piece of scripture that, that is very explicit in certain areas, I, I hope that you might be able to see that God has given us uh, a larger view of life than the moment. Uh, are you living for the moment or are you living your life after God, for God, and uh, uh, for eternity? Are, are you living life with a grand view or are you living life uh, shut away into the smallest of views where you're looking at your feet and at each next step? Uh, I'll end with an illustration. Uh, maybe this can help as you devote yourself today. My grandfather, when he was teaching me how to drive, uh, my parents also taught me, so it's not just my grandfather, but he had one piece of advice. He said, son, you know, when you're on the interstate especially, uh, don't look uh, down while you're driving at, at the road right in front of you. You'll already be there. Uh, you need to look up and look ahead because if you can't see what's coming, how will you avoid danger and how will you stay safe? You've got to be careful because people in front of you are going to be doing dangerous things. Dear Christian, do you have your eyes down? Are you averted from life in general and looking only in the moment for that one piece of pleasure? Or do you have your eyes up? Are you looking at life in a full way to see what is right? God gives us that eyesight. He gives us that heart. Pray for it today as you devote yourself to the Lord.